Here's something really useful. Whenever I long press my power key, I can bring up this floating dock with five of my most frequently used apps to open seamlessly, no matter what screen I'm on too. Or better yet, I can have it bring up my most recently used apps. It makes multitasking a breeze, and the app that makes this possible is called Dockalizer. It links to your power button by pretending to be a digital assistant app. Pretty smart. And since we're talking about apps that let you float useful things over the screen, Floating Assistant is king. It lets you hover just about anything, including your favorite set of apps, a timer, clock, battery level, or for any gamers, the CPU usage, battery temperature, or even the CPU temperature. I can even have an assistant touch that lets me quickly toggle important settings or actions like toggling the flashlight, changing the volume, locking the phone, etc. It's pretty handy for when you're in a full screen game or when you set a timer and need to keep an eye on it no matter what app you're using. Or if any of your hardware buttons are broken, you can use assistive touch to change the volume or lock the device. Again, it's extremely useful and works amazingly. What also looks amazing is our newest set of wallpapers. No matter what widgets or icons you use, these walls will fit the theme you're trying to pull off perfectly, especially if you use the widgets that we made on our Patreon. They're adaptive, interactive, and very customizable. We even made these two walls available to download for free to give you a taste, and if you really enjoy them, you can join our Patreon to unlock the rest. Moving on, tap scroll will save you a ton of painful swipes because whenever you happen to be at the bottom of any page, you can tap on the status bar to instantly scroll back up to the top. Or I can even double tap the status bar to have it automatically scroll back to the bottom. It's really convenient, stays out of the way, and the best part is that it works with almost any app out there. Another annoyance that I'm sure most of us have encountered is this message when trying to share a video, picture, or audio file that apparently is too big to send. What do you do then? Well, the easiest solution is to use an app called FFShare because it can quickly compress any of those files to a much smaller size, barely losing any quality and keeping the same dimensions. It even removes those exit tags, which is great for privacy. All I need to do is share any media that I'd like to compress to the FFShare app and it'll start the process. If it's a picture or audio file, the compression should be almost instantaneous, but if it's a video, it'll take a few more seconds. Still, it's way quicker than running it through a video editor or uploading it to a cloud server to share as a link. And the quality will be a tiny bit lower, but you won't be able to tell the difference unless you look closely. Plus, within the app, you can customize how harsh the compression should be. Now, there are plenty of PDF editors out there, but one of my favorites has always been UPDF, the sponsor of this video. And that's just because it's one of the most feature-packed options I've ever come across while still keeping their UI straightforward and clutter-free. To give you a taste, I can annotate any PDF, edit it while still preserving the original format, convert it, have optical character recognition to interact with written text inside images, sign contracts, and much more. It even integrates with AI to let me do mind-blowing stuff like summarizing highlighted text, explaining, translating, and writing it better. In terms of pricing, UPDF is much cheaper than most popular competitors out there, like 12% of Adobe Acrobat's price, even offering a perpetual plan, which Adobe also doesn't offer. And even the UPDF AI add-on is still way cheaper than its other competitors like ChatPDF or Foxit AI. Plus, it supports way more analysis formats, and it's a lot more accurate. And the best part is that with just one license, you can use it across all your devices, which is fantastic. So if you want the best bang for your buck, check out UPDF. I'll even throw in an extra 63% discount for the UPDF Pro and AI package, and a chance to win a prize worth $599. It's a really great offer, so make sure to act fast so you don't miss out through the top link in the description. Now, something that I haven't seen anywhere else, and I'm sure it can come in handy for some of you, is this app called AudioShare. It lets you connect your computer's audio to your Android phone. That way, your phone can be the speaker for your laptop or desktop. Phone life. And you may not believe this, but not a generic stroke victim. A massive lifesaver if your computer's speakers are broken and you don't have enough money to replace them, especially if it's a laptop. 
Now getting it to work is really easy. You just need to download the AudioShare software on your computer as well as the app on your phone. Make sure both your smartphone and desktop are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Then you need to change the host and port numbers on the Android app to match the numbers found in the Windows software. Click Start Server on the computer and then start on your phone. Now the audio should be connected to your smartphone. Works like a charm. We get it. The ISRO's official. If you're big on torrenting but are tired of using all those sketchy torrenting websites, you can instead turn to Magnet X. It's a powerful search engine that links torrent repositories together so that you can download the best torrents efficiently and quickly. Plus, it even verifies a few to let you know which are the safest to download and is completely free to use. The quick settings panel has been on Android for nearly a decade, but it still lacks a few useful tiles. One of them is for the always on display. On some phones like Samsung, you can quickly toggle the always on display on or off. But you don't get this tile on most other Androids, like the Google Pixels or Nothing phones. Luckily, an app appropriately named Always On Display Toggle lets you add this missing tile to your quick settings, and it works great, letting me quickly toggle the Always On Display on or off. The only annoyance is that you need to enable it with an ADB command from your computer, but after you do, it should work like a charm, at least on most phones. Switching over to the games, first we got Rolling Down Bottles, and it's really easy to pick up and play. The goal is to get the bottle to the bottom of the stairs without having it break. And if this sounds familiar, it's because the developer got the idea from all those popular TikTok videos of people rolling bottles down a flight of stairs, hoping they'll only break when they pass the last step. And this game is exactly like that, except the bottle will only break when it hits an item. So with your finger, you have to swipe right or left to guide the bottle down the stairs until it reaches the bottom. Sure, it can get repetitive, but it's a really great casual game when you're looking to kill time. Another great casual game that requires a bit more thinking is Empty. In this puzzle game, you get presented with a room that you can rotate. The goal is to turn the room at a certain angle where the objects match the color of a wall to camouflage it. Once the colors line up, the object then disappears. And you can keep doing this until the room gets empty to move on to the next level. Seems pretty simple, but as you advance, you'll start to notice that you'll need to camouflage certain objects first because they'll be in the way of others. So it does get pretty tricky to trying to find the right path, but overall it's a really great relaxing game with a pastel theme and soothing sounds. Plus, it's free with no ads or in-app purchases, so there's even more of a reason to give it a shot. Turning things up a bit, Micro Breaker takes the classic brick breaking game to a whole new level, basically modernizing the graphics and giving the game a Michael Bay feel. And they did it right too. The controls are really well done, the camera view is really cool because it angles the platform in a way that makes the game feel more immersive, and the sound effects are amazing. Plus, when you pick up those falling boosts, things get really interesting. Some levels even move around, making it feel like you're fighting a boss than just a regular set of cubes. The only thing I will say is that you will need a higher end device to play this game smoothly since it has such intense graphics, but other than that, it's a fantastic game to play in the long run. Anyways, that's it for the best Android apps for September 2023. Click this video right here if you'd like to view a playlist of all the previous episodes. Drop a thumbs up if you downloaded at least one app from this entire list, and I'll catch you in the next video. Kapow!